So you want to be a minimalist, but you also love physical media. What do you do? Let's talk about that today. If you don't know me, I'm Spencer. I like to talk about simple living, frugality, and cutting down on your technology usage, sometimes through the use of other technologies. I love physical media. I've been talking about it for a while on here now, but I got my CDs, got my records, got my VHS tapes, and recently I've even started collecting some DVDs. Trying to be a minimalist, but I'm definitely not naturally one. In fact, you might call me a hoarder, at least in a nicer way of putting it, a collector. Today I want to talk about that struggle of being a collector who also is a minimalist, or at least striving to be one. How I'm able to do that, or at least how I'm trying to do that, what strategies I'm employing, and what I've decided to keep in my intentional curated physical media catalog. So let's get started. So I've been interested in minimalism for a long time now, probably like eight or nine years I got into the minimalism trend and I've just always been into it. I've done like bigger stints where I've gotten rid of stuff and I tried to do an all like monochrome wardrobe, like gray and black and white and that didn't really last for too long, but you know, I've tried here and there little spurts of minimalism where I had some more success and then maybe I went back on it, but I always kind of find myself getting pulled back toward collecting stuff because I like stuff to a degree, right? I like physical media because I like the physicality. I like the tangible nature of it. I like looking at the packaging. I like looking at the boxes and enjoying the artwork on it even. Like I just like the experience of holding something in my hand. So I don't naturally gravitate to being that minimalist who's digitized their entire life and lives out of a backpack with their laptop and that's it. But I'm trying to strike a balance because I think we can all benefit from minimalism in some way. I think we all have way too much stuff. If you take a look at the average thing that an American owned, the average amount of possessions from like the 1950s to now, it has skyrocketed. The amount of space that we also need to store that stuff has grown as well. And as a result, we also need bigger places in order to store that. So the costs have went up as well. I do think there is a happy medium where you can enjoy the stuff you have while not having to cast it all out. I think you don't have to be that kind of evangelical minimalist who says, love people, use things. Cause it doesn't work so well the other way around. I'll break down all of the things that I have now and what things that I'm still kind of struggling with. CDs, I've pretty much gotten rid of. I have a few CDs that I have out in my car, which I've been enjoying listening to when I'm driving around. Most of the digital music that I'm downloading now is from places like Cobuzz or HD Tracks, where I'm paying for an actual download of the DRM-free file. When I listen to music around the house, it's vinyl. I like listening to vinyl. I like the feeling of dropping the needle down and hearing the crackles and the pop on the record. So I don't really need a super good quality record. It really just brings me back. Brings me back to a time I was never there. <laughs> At the early outset of this channel, I made a video about my VHS collection as well. I love my VHS tapes. I have a lot of classics from that time, like Five Goes West, Space Jam, and Homeward Bound. Those are all just like huge nostalgic pulls for me and I do really enjoy having those too. But recently what I've started getting as well is DVDs. Now I used to obviously have a ton of DVDs growing up. When I was a security guard, I was a security guard like 10 years ago, and I used to work the 12 hour overnight shifts at like a parking garage or something like that. Um, I would get this deal at the local pawn shop and it was 20 DVDs for 20 bucks. And I would just go in there every week or two, 20 bucks, get 20 DVDs, and I'd mow them all down in a week of work, and then I would go get some more and trade the other ones in. So at one time I did have a pretty good collection of DVDs, but I found myself getting rid of those in my more minimalist years as like Netflix was coming up and stuff like that because I found that I didn't really need to have the physical copies. But as a lot of people have maybe done and then come to learn, that wasn't necessarily the smartest thing. DVDs are great because you're able to get full seasons of shows. You were able to get some shows on VHS, but it was like maybe selections of certain episodes. It was never full seasons because they just couldn't fit that much on that medium. And my favorite TV shows, things like Family Guy, Simpsons, King of the Hill, Seinfeld, even Friends, those shows have all come down so much in price because DVDs have been out for so long. And I'm able to find used DVDs for like five bucks for an entire season of one of those shows. But with such deals like that out on the market, it is tough to see all of these deals and not pounce on all of them. That is the collector mindset inside of me that I see all this stuff and I think I need it, I need it, I need it. And pretty soon you have a whole media room 
when you had nothing to begin with because you just buy an entire collection at once because the deal is so good. So the first thing you need to do if you want to have a minimalist mindset, if you want to practice minimalism to some degree, as well as maintain some level of a collection, is you need to be intentional. And you need to just do more than the word intentional. You need to get real about what you want, how much room you're gonna actually dedicate to this stuff, what value you actually are seeking out of these things. For me, I knew when I got some shows, I was just gonna get you know, my favorite TV shows, I was gonna get maybe one or two seasons of each. I wasn't gonna try to collect the complete series of every one of these shows. You know, that would be nice. But if we say I want, I like 10 different shows and I just get one season of each, that's maybe 10 box sets, right? As opposed to getting a complete series of 10 different shows, we could be up to 100 box sets. That's a lot more space to take up. And I'm not gonna watch all of those complete series. So I just gotta pick my favorite season of a show, for example, the ones that I think have the most hits in it for me, the ones that I'm most nostalgic about, I'm just gonna be visiting these from time to time. It's not like every single day I'm anticipating watching these. So I just wanna have my favorite, favorite episodes and that's gonna be what I jump for. That's gonna be the show, the season that I pick up. Same for VHS tapes, same for records. I wanna have basically just those Halo titles for me, those, those absolute top tier creme de la creme things that I really, really, really enjoy. Those things that you almost could not go without happily. And those things are the ones that you wanna prioritize getting. It's really important to try to curate that catalog. I think it's also important to keep that mindset that you don't need to keep any of these things forever. You could just be buying it to enjoy it for a period of time until it's no longer serving you and then let it go. It's a rental that you can control the return time. Think about it more like that. I can buy a TV show season, I can watch it until I don't wanna watch it no more, and then if I decide to, I can go take it somewhere and trade it in, and I can get a couple bucks back and put it toward the next show that I wanna watch. I think by having that kind of open-handed approach where you're not holding so tightly onto everything that you bring in, you're more easily to let things come and go through your life, right? Pass through your hand. You'll probably get a lot less possessive over your possessions as a result. And I think that is gonna be the key thing to being a minimalist as well as being a collector, is not seeing the collection as a static thing. See it as something that is ever changing, that is changing with your needs, with your interests and with your desires. You don't need to keep this stuff forever. You can enjoy it for a time being, and then you can try to get some money out of it and then collect something else that you're more likely going to enjoy at that time. The last thing that I'll tell you that has been my strategy, which has been very helpful to me, is give yourself a fixed space where that item is able to go. And if you have too much of it and it can't fit in there, then you're gonna have to do a little bit of a cull to make it fit. Be brutal about this. You need to make sure that you are tough on this because if you just start letting it slip, you're gonna end up having this stuff all over the place and pretty soon you're gonna be having an unintended media room. And there's nothing wrong with a media room, but not everybody wants one. I don't have space for a dedicated media room, so there's no media room for me. Pick that space and be firm, that if it can't fit into that space anymore, you gotta make some changes, you gotta make some adjustments. I'll show you my media drawer that I have, which is for DVDs and VHS tapes. So this was the drawer that I showed you in my VHS video. It's changed a little bit over time. It has DVDs in it now. It looks very similar to how it did last year, but if you recall with the VHS video, which I will link above if you wanna watch that one if you haven't seen it before, it was pretty much wall-to-wall -wall VHSs. There was some room in there that I was able to kind of rejig it and play the Tetris game in order to fit a few more tapes in there once I got those. But when I decided to start bringing DVDs into my life to watch some TV shows I liked again, I had to make some hard choices with my VHS collection and I had to get rid of some titles that I enjoyed but that I really, when I was real about it, wasn't going to watch again in a very long time and really didn't need. So now it's about 40% DVDs and 60% VHS tapes in here. And that's probably about the balance that it's going to stay for the next little while. But you know, over time, it might end up shifting one way or the other again. And this is the thing, you have to kind of keep that open-handed approach. Just be open to the waves, be open to the changes of your desire and the things that you're gonna actually enjoy. Let the things go that are no longer serving you and you're gonna have a less cluttered home. You're gonna have a little bit more money in your pocket as a result, most likely. And you're also gonna have the peace of mind that comes along with that as well. Now, I had to be pretty choosy about what shows I got. Simpsons is probably my favorite to watch nowadays and I have three seasons of The Simpsons. I got Simpsons season four, I have Simpsons season three in here somewhere too. And then I also got this copy of Simpsons season seven, 
but it was missing a disc, so I got them to give it to me for half price, which is a pretty good deal. As far as just getting a single film, like I have no reason to get DVDs, I think, as opposed to VHS tapes. And with the TV that I have as well, I feel like it's just the perfect pairing to do VHS with that TV. With TV shows, you just really can't do the same deal because as I said, you're not able to get the same amount of episodes on a VHS tape. You're able to basically for the same size as a VHS tape, get like 20 episodes of a TV show on one DVD set like this. So just having such an efficiently kind of packed setup like that, then I'm able to hook a DVD player up to my TV and enjoy my shows that way. And honestly, early Simpsons and stuff works just fine on a TV like mine. With records, my girlfriend and I recently moved to them. They were in milk crates over on the other side of the room here. However, they were kind of just in the way and they were collecting dust and like, it just made the room a lot smaller. So we decided, you know what, we're gonna put a restriction on that as well. And that is, we're gonna put them in this media cabinet thing that we have here with my TV on it. We have two different sides that we had room for it and we decided whatever could fit in there is the max of records that we're allowed to have. So the record collection is fit in here now and I feel pretty good about it like this. I like a lot of cheap records. I pretty much never buy like brand new vinyl at all. I would guess out of like the 100 records I have, assuming I have around 100, probably two of the hundred were bought new and the rest of them were all just old secondhand records. Probably like 40% of my records are rock records and then the other 60% are old folk records. Folk and jazz and classical and things like that. The best things about records like that is, in my opinion, that's like the quintessential music to listen to on a record. It just, to me, you're already going old school listening to records, so why don't you listen to some old music on it as well? You know, I have a really good album that I like to listen to when I'm prepping dinner with my girlfriend. It is called Music for Dining. And just look at that. It's just like nice dinner jazz music that's just perfect while you're making food. Records like that, that's the majority of the records that I have is stuff like that. Kind of weird releases like that. I find those in like thrift stores all over the country. I find those even at record stores always in the bargain bin. Sometimes you'll find rock records in the bargain bin too, but usually they're there because they're really scratched and they're not gonna play super well. However, with old jazz and folk music like that and old country as well, they're all in the bargain bin just because nobody wants them. So they're usually in super good condition and you're able to get these records for like two bucks a piece. That's a blessing, but also a curse because I'm able to get some really good records and not pay a lot of money for it. But it's also really hard to not get a huge amount of records and end up with a media room again. Once again, I think coming back to this, having a space for stuff, a fixed space that you say, whatever can fit on here, I'm allowed to have. Other than that, I'm done. As for books, it's a little bit different because I still am not happy with how I'm storing my books. I have them in these cabbage crates ever since I moved in with my girlfriend. They're basically like milk crates, but they collapse and they're double wide. That allowed me to have a pretty good amount of storage for books. However, I still am just not happy with how they are. So I'm still looking to get a shelf for them. And that's either gonna give me a little bit more or a little bit less space for my books. But once I get that shelf, that's the end. If I have like a six foot tall bookshelf, I'm not allowing myself to have more than that. I'll show you how I have it now and I'll show you a little bit of a trick way that you're able to kind of overcome your barrier by being a little bit more efficient and playing a little bit of Tetris with your space. As you can see by this bookshelf setup, I'm pretty much maxed out in here as much as I could fit. But I went a little bit beyond this. I used to have even more of these, probably almost double the amount of crates that I have here. And I had to make some really hard choices in order to fit them into what I fit them into now. However, the way that I was able to overcome this a little bit is by really 3D chessing it. I got books behind books, guys. What I did was I put my books up on leftover egg cartons. And what that did for me was just raise the books up a bit, raise the spines up. So I'd be able to just tell at a glance what was back there if I was looking for a book. As you can see, I have those books double stacked for two of the three crates that I have. That's a great way to go if you find yourself having a hard time just parting with a few items and you don't really want to part with them in the end, but you also don't want them to take up as much space as they currently are. You just have to be more creative and just try to get really, really efficient with how you're storing these things. I'm gonna give Pinterest a shout out on this one because I'm not really a Pinterest person. I would like to be, but I just have never really got into it. 
I went to Pinterest looking for suggestions how to store my books more efficiently in a small space, and that was one of the things that I found, was using these book risers to get them double stacked on a given shelf. It's a great way to go if you want to make a lot of stuff fit into a smaller space, be more efficiently packed. However, I do think efficiency can go so far, but you do have to be pretty hard with keeping a designated space that this is where this stuff is allowed to go and it's not able to take up any more space. That way you're able to curate something and continue with that curation rather than just the mindless collecting that even really bleeds into hoarding. I think that's a great way to go if you want to try to find a way to marry minimalism with a love of stuff, a healthy love of stuff. Remembering that you're going to use that stuff for the time that you're going to enjoy it. And then once some of these things aren't serving you and you find that you're, you know, really maxed out in the designated space you have for that given thing, you can make some adjustments. You can get rid of some things that are no longer working for you and bring in some things that you're more excited to have at that time. Once again, I think it's just about keeping that mindset that I'm going to enjoy this thing while I have it, but then I'm going to be firm about the space that I'm going to allow my things to take up in my home and in my life. And if I get to a point where I'm feeling like that's maxed out, then I need to sit down, really reevaluate and reflect on what my mission is, what things I need and what's going to best serve that mission and then make the adjustments accordingly. But make sure that you're firm to that space. I do think that is the biggest thing that you can do is to just stay true to yourself, keep reflecting on what you need and what your mission is, what your goal is, and what really makes you happy. And then the second part of that is picking a designated space and not letting yourself overfill beyond that designated space. So this was a bit of a different video from me, guys. I hope you found it interesting. Just my approach, how I've been thinking about this recently, as somebody who loves to collect as somebody who enjoys things, but who doesn't want to just mindlessly hoard things. Trying to live a little bit more of a minimalist lifestyle, striving to do more minimalism, and just doing my best. Let me know what you thought of this video and if this is something that you've been thinking about or it's something that you've been dealing with. Share your thoughts with me below. Do you have any strategies how you're able to enjoy the things you have while keeping a tidy minimalist home? Or is this something that you're interested in working toward and do you have any things that you've been kind of considering as strategies to do that going forward? Let me know in the comments. I would love to hear from you. Thanks very much for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video.